All right, so are you ready to dive into iOS 18? Oh, absolutely. Always up for a good tech deep dive, especially when it's something this big. Right. It feels like everyone's talking about it. Yeah. And luckily, you found us a pretty solid breakdown to help us figure out if we should actually you know, hit that update button. Yeah, new releases are always exciting, but I'm with you. Got to make sure we understand what we're getting into. Exactly. So we're checking out this YouTube video from Twapple Mundo iPhone, iPad Y, iOS. Okay. Yeah, I've seen their stuff. They seem to have a good handle on Apple News. Right. They really seem to live and breathe this stuff. Yeah. And look, we always like to look at multiple sources, you know, get different perspectives. But honestly, this video was just too good to pass up. Makes sense. Let's hear it. Okay, so first things first. When can we actually expect iOS 18 to hit our devices? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. Right. Well, according to this video, it's looking like September 16th, 2024, a Monday release. Interesting. Mondays aren't usually the go-to for this kind of thing, are they? That's what I thought. Seems very deliberate, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Apple loves to control the narrative, right? A Monday launch, likely right after their typical September event, gives them maximum media attention, gets everyone talking right at the start of the week. Smart. Very smart. Mm. Now, not every iPhone is invited to the party, though. The video mentions iPhone 10s, 10R, and anything newer. Oh, and the second gen SE and beyond. I guess that makes sense. But does anything about that compatibility list stand out to you? Well, it's that balancing act Apple always seems to be doing right. They want to encourage upgrades, obviously. But they also know that some users are completely happy with their older devices. True. Not everyone needs the latest and greatest. Exactly. And supporting the iPhone X's, which, let's be honest, is a few years old now, allows them to keep a broader range of users engaged. It's all about finding that sweet spot, huh? Okay, so one thing this YouTuber is seriously passionate about, backups. Mm. Like, he does not let up on this. Backups? Really? Oh, yeah. He's borderline obsessed. Yeah. But, like, in a good way. In yeah. a responsible, techie kind of way. Okay, I can appreciate that, but... Why is he so hung up on backups, especially with a brand new iOS release? That's actually a really good question. Mm -hmm. Because in theory, shouldn't a new OS be, you know, better, less likely to have problems? Well, in a perfect world, sure. But you know how it goes. Sadly, yes. Early OS versions can sometimes come with, um, how do I put this? Surprises. Let's say surprises. Oh, I think we all know what those surprises look like. Bugs, <laughs> glitches, the dreaded spinning wheel of doom. Exactly. And that's where the backups come in. Think of it as your safety net. If something goes wrong, which, let's be honest, it can you can easily revert back to your previous stable setup. No harm, no foul. Okay, so peace of mind is worth a few minutes of backup time. <sighs> Got it. He also mentioned something about checking for signed versions of iOS 17, <laughs> even after 18 comes out. Now, that sounds a little more advanced the signed versions. yeah that's what i thought what is that all about okay so it's a good trick to have up your sleeve even if you're not super techy basically even after a new ios launches apple continues to sign those older versions for a short while like they're <laughs> giving you a permission slip to downgrade back to ios 17 if you need to so it's like a time limited escape route exactly but it's time sensitive so if you're having second thoughts about the update keep an eye out for that window noted now this next tip seems a bit intense He's recommending 10 to 15 gigabytes of free space before updating. Wow, that seems like a lot. Right. That's what I thought. Is that really necessary? He's not wrong to be cautious, though modern operating systems are complex, right? Tons of moving parts. When you update, you're basically unpacking and installing a ton of new code. Okay, that makes sense. I guess it's like downloading a massive game or something. Exactly. It needs space, especially temporary storage, while it's all being sorted out. If your phone is already bursting at the seams, things can get messy. Imagine your phone just stopping mid-update because it ran out of space. Oh, yeah. Talk about a digital meltdown. Right. So, yeah, decluttering our digital lives is almost as important as backing up before we even think about downloading. Makes sense. All right, so let's talk performance. Did this new iOS make our YouTuber's phone feel like a rocket ship or what? Well, he ran some speed tests and the results were pretty interesting, but you know, I'm always a little hesitant to put too much stock in those benchmark numbers. Yeah, those synthetic benchmarks don't always tell the whole story. Exactly. They don't always reflect real world use, you know? Plus, there's often a lot of background optimization happening when an OS is fresh out of the gate. You know, indexing, things like Stuff that can drain your battery like crazy for the first few days. Exactly. So, yeah, it's kind of like that new car smell. Exciting, but you got to let things air out a bit first. I like that analogy. Hmm? Speaking of letting things air out, he made another point that I thought was interesting. He's actually recommending that people with an iPhone 12 or older hold off on the upgrade for a little while. 
Yeah, I caught that too. He seemed pretty adamant about it, actually. Yeah, he even said he's going to wait and see how things shake out over the first few weeks before he takes the plunge himself. Pretty cautious for a tech YouTuber, don't you think? Maybe, but I can see where he's coming from. Older hardware can still be very capable, but it might not be designed to handle all the demands of a brand new operating system, you know? All the new features, the background processes, everything. It's not just about speed, either. It's about battery life, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And even potential app compatibility issues. You never know. So, it's like you said in the video, if you prioritize a smooth, reliable experience above all else, maybe waiting to see how iOS 18 performs on older devices isn't a bad idea. Yeah, I think that's fair advice. It's all about finding the right balance for your own needs and priorities. Now, speaking of interesting decisions, this is where things get a little more interesting. He pointed out that Apple is releasing iOS 17.7 .7 at the same time as the iOS 18 update. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Hmm. That caught me off guard a bit. What's the strategy there? Is Apple feeling generous this year? I don't think it's about generosity. I think it's about Apple being smart. Remember how we talked about them understanding user behavior? Oh yeah, they're masters at that. Right. So by offering both iOS 17.7 .7 and iOS 18, they're essentially giving users a choice. A choice between the shiny new thing and the yeah. less shiny but potentially more stable thing. Exactly. Some people are all about those new features, right? They got to have the latest and greatest. The early adopters. Exactly. But then you have other users who are perfectly content with what they have. They just want a more refined, polished version of their current OS. The bug fix group. Exactly. And that's what iOS 17.7 .7 seems to be. It's a way for Apple to say, hey, we hear you. You don't want the hassle of a brand new OS. No problem. We got you covered. Right. Like they're acknowledging that new isn't always better. Yeah. At least not for everyone. Exactly. And it's a win-win for them too, right? How so? Well, they keep a larger portion of their user base on secure, up-to-date software. Even if those users aren't quite ready to jump into a whole new OS experience. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. Keep everyone happy and secure. That's the Apple way. Pretty much. So yeah, I'd say this was a pretty insightful deep dive. We covered a lot of ground here. We did. We know when to expect iOS 18, September 16th. Mm -hmm. We know who can join the party, iPhone 10s and newer, plus those second-gen SE users and beyond. And we talked about the absolute must do backing up your data. Seriously, folks, don't skip that step. Never. We even got a little techie with those signed versions and the importance of free space before updating. It's all about being prepared, right? Absolutely. And then, to top it all off, we learned that Apple is shaking things up this year by offering that parallel update with iOS 17.7. .7. Giving users a real choice, which I think is great. Totally agree. Whether you're craving those new iOS 18 features or you prefer the stability of a refined iOS 17, you've got options. Options are always good. Couldn't agree more. So as we wrap up, here's something I've been thinking about. When it comes to these OS updates, how do you personally decide when to hit that update button? Are you the type who jumps in on day one? Or do you wait and see how things shake out for a while? You know, that's a good question. I'm kind of curious to hear what other people do, actually. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. It's all about what works for you. I'm sure our listeners have their own strategies. Absolutely. Everyone's yeah. got their own comfort level with these things. Well, on that note, thanks for diving deep with us on this one. Mm. Until next time, remember, update wisely. <laughs>